He denies having nodded in response to that question, then you would say that's incorrect? I would. Right. If, if, if that, and, and Alistair Johnson, I haven't spoken to him since uh, the press conference yesterday, but if he denies uh, shaking, uh, sorry, nodding the head, then I would say, yes, that is absolutely wrong. But I only have the other record reporter's word for that, so I'm, clearly I'm not going to believe that either. It's not the first time that... Um, uh, so you're calling Keith Jackson a liar as well? I've, I'm certainly calling the Daily Record... I, uh, I've oh, been, carry on, carry on. I've been calling the Daily Record liars in the past, yes, absolutely. So, you're, you're so there's a track the record there, Jim. You're saying the Daily Record... Um, has lied in the past, yes. Yeah, no, but you're saying they're liars. That's what you're saying. They were all liars in the Daily Record. Is that what you're saying? I don't think so. Point not only Alistair that. Johnson's been called a liar today, but also everybody in the Daily Record. This is very interesting. Carry on, Chick. Where, where, where point of that? Where, no, that, where on, was that said? Where was I, that think, said? I think somebody in a position of authority in BBC should have a whisper in your ear and tell you enough's enough. You're in enough trouble Jim, already. At what Jim, point did Jim, I say that? You, Jim, you're well, like, I tell you what, we'll, we'll let you. Own, we'll, you we'll let you two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll let you two sort that out. Just, just one thing to clarify, Jim. Why, why just the BBC got it wrong yesterday? Why not? Sky Sports, well, Richard, STV, I, I Radio, Real Radio, various others. I, I don't know the answer to that because I don't control the news pages. But maybe, maybe... So why are you having this debate? Hold on. Hold on. Maybe, maybe the BBC should take it as a feather in the cap that it's the only one we monitor. Well, the, the use of the word maybe there, I sense, was a little ironic. All right, then. Take it as a feather in your cap that it's the only one we monitor. We don't, we don't bother with the others. We look at the BBCs, we listen to the BBCs. Uh, does that you not tell you something? You can see why fewer and fewer people are bothering with the dealer record, actually. Right, are you two finished? Oh, I'm actually finished. You know, and you know I, I, I know you are. The, the, actual, the, the tragedy of this, Richard, is that um, all of this squabbling is taken away from the facts of the story. And Rangers fans listening to this will be far more interested in the real situation that Rangers are in rather than whether the dealer record think I'm incompetent or anything yeah. else. I think we really have to talk about what it means, where Rangers are actually financially. Uh, the headline was great, but I think what Alistair Johnson had to say uh, was of much interest as well in terms of um, the takeover by Craig White, uh, the, the financial, and this was all triggered, remember, by the interim figures which were released yesterday and showed that Rangers' overall um, debt was around £29 million, but Alistair Johnson argued the case that the, the real um, picture will be painted at the end of season figures, uh, which sorry, end of year figures which come out at the end of June. Um, Rangers have made huge progress actually uh, over the last 18 months or so. Uh, they made a trading profit of £23.1 million and they've paid off £12 million in bank debt uh, and, and, and cleared a lot of other debt as well. So they are going in the direction, the, the correct direction, and that is what has to be painted. I think the figures were unfortunate because people grab on a sum, uh, and those of us who are not well enough versed in, in uh, statements of accounts will just see one figure and go down that road but Rangers are making progress and despite despite the, the chairman admitting they could in that scenario with the with that uh, tax bill hanging over them could I said go into good go bust uh, I don't think that's anywhere near the reality uh, and that's what Alistair George went on to to paint the picture which he went on to paint and I must say despite all the debate we've just had I think he did a fine job in admitting the truth talking very freely about Craig White and the takeover talking about the demands that were put on Craig White to assure there is financial investment in the club in the future and where exactly he is as chairman and where the board of directors are uh, with the club and indeed what that as he called that uh, ten thousand pound gorilla the hmrc settlement which a decision on which should come in october or november and and, and wouldn't the, despite questioning several minutes of questioning wouldn't quantify what the, what that figure might be there is another issue this has moved on slightly today in that I believe that, that Craig White, because of this £2.8 million pound tax bill that they've just been hit with, it, it landed through their letterbox three weeks ago relating to transfers of two or three players about 11 years ago. Um, they have to pay that. I think they've started paying it, but the board had no idea that was coming. I think they believe that m the Murray Group uh, were aware of it. Al um, Craig White wasn't aware of it, and I think, I understand that he is saying or will say to them first thing on Monday that he will not pay that bill. And if that bill, that £2.8 million, is not removed and the figures for buying this club are not adjusted, he will not buy this club. Jim, could, that, of that, could that figure grow further? Are there more players in the equation who could be similarly... Um, well, the situation well, could affect Rangers in the way that Rangers, these, these, Rangers these have. Don't, the Rangers directors, the board of directors, don't know because they had no idea and they have no idea... Um, 
you know, about what, what it relates to. Uh, so they don't know if there'll be any more. They don't think there will be more, but, of course, the major issue is the, the HMRC big case. But um, at the moment, uh, Craig White, I believe, will not pay that. And if the figures are not adjusted down accordingly, there will be no sale. That 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 um, sum that 2.8 million pounds um, that came up, as Jim said, was um, incurred between 99 and 2003, uh, and I, I do think they're capable of embracing that uh, at the moment. It was, as, as Jim said, it came. It was something you knew nothing about. It surfaced. I'm, I'm desperate looking at my notes so I don't, I don't misquote the, the chairman. It surfaced uh, because of another case. It's a compensation-related scheme. He said nobody is quite sure what it was, but for sure they have to pay that. Two Two point eight million pounds. So we underline that it's totally different from the major bill that we're talking about. This that will come October, November time. Right, yes, but quite, it will stop the deal if it's somebody else doesn't pay it. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what's becoming clear, quite apart from um, your um, disagreement over um, the nod or what may or may not have been intended. Uh, I'm over, nodding just over, now. Well, and so am I. <laughs> over the um, the future of Rangers, um, you, you clearly both agree that it it remains a very serious. Financial uh, situation Richard, that, that I, the club faces. I said all along that. And actually, you, you mentioned earlier you don't. Alistair Johnson perhaps didn't quite want to feel that it could go down or would go down that way. You still feel administration's a serious possibility I for think, Rangers. Yes, I do. I, I, I believe that administration's a serious possibility for Rangers, particularly if this current buyout attempt falls through. And I still say it's no better than 50-50. But I mean, if they lose that the tax case, how on earth can Rangers pay that? And if the Inland Revenue refuse to do a deal to allow them to pay it up, then you are looking at administration. Unless there's another buyer out there. And again, perhaps there are one or two people on the fringes waiting until this club is about to topple into administration, maybe even allow it to get into administration, clear off the debts by paying 20, 30 pence in the pound and getting it for nothing. That's a possibility too. Right. Shall we leave it there, gentlemen? It's um, clear. Just, just to check, recap. Then. A coffee check. No, I'm just wondering. It's <laughs> a brandy. If, if, if Rangers, if you, now you become Rangers puppets, I will probably read about that in your paper. That'll be the return. Oh, you jealous, you check. Is, is somebody taking your job? That'd son. be a fine story to get, Jim. I would say. <laughs> I would, unlike you, I'd bound say that would be an excellent exclusive to get. So no doubt, now that you're the puppets of, of the club, you'll get the, turn, the favour return to. <laughs> so says, and that's a that's a direct quote from Rangers. 20-year-long cheerleader. Well done, Charles. And then now, now, I have to say, Jim, you've, you've actually gone too far. The very thought of checking a cheerleading outfit has, has <laughs> put the nation off their afternoon snack. It has to be said, right, let, let's leave it there. But it, by the sound of things, um, there has to be a breakthrough one way or the other in this story by what? Tuesday, Wednesday of next well, week, I, I has to be done and dusted by then? I think, um, and again, I must quote the man directly, he said over the next um, couple of days, but I, I, we'll, we'll, Alistair Johnson presumably was, um, this is a weekend, so not all, you, you, you don't tell the stock exchange things on a Saturday and Sunday, so you would think maybe by, I would say, Tuesday we should have some kind of decision, and I'm still... I'm still going down the road to say this will not happen, but certainly the, the man, Craig White, has moved on considerably. You have to say that even if he does walk away, this has probably cost him, and I'm only, this is a guesstimate, I don't know, a quarter of a million pounds, legal fees and, and research to do the due, due diligence, all that kind of thing. That is, is it, he has lost, he will have lost a lot of money, even if he walks away now, that, that is for sure. Um, and, and indeed, what happens to Rangers if he does walk away? Um, th there's much can happen. Uh, I will not faint. If he if he takes over the club, but I still I'm very cynical. And and and, I, and again, Richard, I would pose the question: Why would you want to buy something for, let's say, and and people might argue about the figure. Once he's paid off the bank, once he's squared up David Murray, once he's pledged this uh, money to to invest in the club and players in years to come, let's say for argument's sake, we're talking for 50 million pounds. Why would you suddenly take a gamble with that money when you may? you may be liable for a tax bill of, say, another, who knows, £30 million in October, November. Would you go down that road without an assurance that someone else is paying that tax bill and the banks ain't going to pay it? And I would doubt if David Murray, who's taken £6 million out of it, would say, that's OK, I'll take care of that as well. Well, so there's, there's, no provision, there's no provision for that uh, potential tax liability in Murray Group's uh, account, so clearly they don't think they're paying for it. Lloyds Bank say they won't yep. pay for it. So why Craig White they... says, I'm not paying for it. 
but he did say he was happy with the facility that was in place. What that facility is, I'm not quite sure, but I, that's why I've always said no better than 50-50, but um, I, I don't think, certainly, if he, if he presses ahead, it won't be done by Monday. That's one thing Alistair Johnson did get wrong. It will not be done by Monday. OK, um, we're going to leave it there. Look, thanks to everybody for getting in touch. Lots and lots of you texting and emailing.